Hey everybody, welcome to a new series of videos I'm hoping to make that um, show how I go about building some of the components that we use in Lemon Squeezy um, using Vue and Tailwind CSS. All of the Lemon Squeezy app is built using Vue on the front end um, and it uses Tailwind CSS for all of our styles. Um, and maybe you're a, a designer who's wanting to learn how to, to code. Maybe you're um, a, a dev who's never used Tailwind before and you're just interested in finding out what it's like and how to use it. And um, regardless of, of why you're watching this, I hope you find some value out of it and, and let me know um, if you enjoy it or not, or if it's useful or, or if it could be better. But we're going to just jump into it now. Um, and I'm just going to explain what I've got at the moment. So this is um, our component, um, our billing plan component. So in Lemon Squeezy, we're going to have a few of these for our different billing plans and the, the customer is going to be able to, to choose a plan um, and there's different names for the different plans, a short description for each one, and it shows a price and a transaction fee. And we're going to have a few of these in a list um, and that will be how you select your billing plan in Lemon Squeezy app. This isn't actually built yet, um, but this is just a small component um, that I was building uh, just yesterday. And I thought it would be interesting just to show how I would go about building this in Vue and Tailwind. So let's get to it. Uh, over here, I've created a, a, a plan object. This cr uh, contains some of the basic information um, that we need to build our component. Um, normally, this would be passed in as a prop or something, but in this case, it's just a, co a computed property. And um, yeah, it just has a few simple um, fields that just describe um, the information we want to show. So the first thing we need to do, as always, is um, build the HTML for our component. So we're just going to add a few simple things here. We're going to add um, the title first, and we're going to add the description and we need to add the um, the price um, and and um, we need to show a kind of this um, transaction fee so there's two parts to this transaction fee there's the percentage um, and there is a, a cent fee, as it were, a, a kind of charge as well. So it's three and a half percent plus 30 cents. So I'll do plan dot fee charge C. Um, yeah, and then the last thing we have is a button. And this is how um, the customer will choose their plan. I'm just going to put choose plan in here um, and hit save and we can just see our, our kind of basic structure here and I've got current plan here but that's okay. Um, so that yeah that's the, the basis of our HTML that's kind of everything that we're all the information that we need to show. Um, so yeah let's see how we go about doing this. So let's let's first things first let's um, try and style this kind of surrounding box so we're going to add um, a border class um, and just explain here that we have um, a, a bunch of custom Tailwind uh, colors and uh, sizes and different things set up for Lemon Squeezy. So if I open my Tailwind config, you can see here that we have a, a different scale from what's the, the normal kind of scale used in Tailwind CSS. We've got an eight pix a pixel scale. So, you know, if you do MB1, um, it'll add a, an eight pixel margin bottom and MB2 would add a 16 pixel margin bottom. So that's just our custom scale that we use in Lemon Squeezy. Um, we've got some font sizes, different border radiuses. And the other thing we have is our brand colors, um, which are all uh, in here and they're prefixed with WTF, um, which is their kind of make lemonade brand colors. So just to explain that when I do border light 97 here, um, that uh, reflects this color, this custom color that we've, we've put in here. So if I save that, nothing happens because I first need to add the border class. 
um, and I think that's actually the wrong class. So it's actually 84. Um, so we've got a border. Let's make the um, box or have some border radius um, and let's give it some padding. Um, and so, yeah, so that's not bad. That looks like our kind of basic box. Um, next thing we want to do probably is um, style this label here, um, this title label. Um, so we can go into our H4 here and let's first of all do the background color. So remember I said our, our colors are WTF, so it's WTF blue. Um, text has got to be white. Um, the font weight looks like it's medium. And um, what else is there that looks like it's rounded? And it also looks like it's an inline block. Um, and yeah, we need some padding as well. So let's do um, PX1 or let's just do, yeah, so it's, I think it's meant to be PX1 and PY 0.5. Yeah, that looks good. Let me just double check that. Um, what do I have here? Oh, it's one and a half and 0 0.5. Um, so I'm just referencing this top component that I have already made, um, the completed one, just to see exactly what I've done here. I noticed one other thing is I just need to change the font size in here. So it's a 13, 13 pixel font. Um, and it also looks like this, it's not a medium font, it's semi bold. So let's go with semi bold. There we go, that's our label. So just to, one other thing just to explain here is that I, I kind of am manually ordering these um, differently and every, everybody can do this differently. Obviously this is just down to preference, but I tend to like to, um, you know, have the kind of block level styles or, or padding or margins, spacing, that kind of thing first. And um, then maybe do, you know, like fonts, if you're changing font colors and background colors, that kind of thing. And then have any kind of like uh, extra um, definitions at the end, you know, if it's like rounded or box shadows or something, I tend to put them in the end. That's just it. That's just kind of the way I naturally order my um, Tailwind classes, but there's no set way of doing that, obviously, just whatever feels right to you. So, um, yeah, so the last thing here, I'm just going to put in a margin at the bottom. And yeah, I think that's as done for this label. So, Let's maybe do the uh, this next price label here. So you'll see that the monthly price is actually in um, everything in, in Lemon Squeezy is done in, in integers. So we don't use decimals for our money values. Um, so one of the things that we can do here is um, create a, a, another computed property um, that gives us the monthly price, but without the extra zeros. So you'll see over here that it, it's currently 2,900, but obviously we want it just to show 29. So um, what we can do here is we can create a new compute property and we can return um, the plan and then return the monthly price. And we'll just divide it by 100. And what we'll do is to make sure that it's, well, I'll, I'll show you what this looks like first. So if I put this in here, Oh, no, it does come out as just 29, that's fine. I was What I was gonna say is we can, another thing we can do is just in case the value isn't a round value, when you divide it, you can do math dot round. Um, so yeah, so there's our monthly price um, and it needs a, a dollar symbol and it also needs a slash month because it's a monthly price. Um, yeah, so let's style this then. Uh, as you'll see from the, the completed component, we have two different styles here, one for the dollar value and one for the slash month label, as it were. So let's do the label first. Um, it looks like it's a bit smaller um, and it also looks like it's a gray color. Um, and so that's, yeah, as I updated that there, you should see the month update. Now. The 29 is bigger and it's a bit bolder. So let's add some classes here. 
Um, I, I'm not entirely sure what font size this is. Let me double check here. Where have I put it? It's 20. So we'll do text 20, which should increase it. And it's font semi bold, I'm gonna guess. No, it's too strong, it must be font medium. And yeah, and there we go. So that's the, the label. Um, so the next uh, part is this, we'll just do this per transaction bit. This actually looks reasonably straightforward. So I just need to add the per transaction um, bit of text. And then this whole thing looks like it's just the, the kind of lighter gray color that we have. So text gray. And then we have this button. So I'm gonna just um, add a BTN class here. So one of the things that you can do in Tailwind is um, extract classes um, into their own kind of components. So instead of, you know, doing um, background color, whatever you, you know, whatever you would have done, text, white, oh, text, white and whatnot, you know, rounded, add some padding, that kind of thing. Instead of doing all that, you can extract all of these classes um, into, into a separate component, um, which I've just called button. And I'll just show you exactly what that looks like. A, a button component that I've extracted using apply, and all these classes are the classes that we would normally have added um, to the, the button HTML element. But because we've extracted them, we can use them, reuse them, whatever we want. So um, that's what I've done here. Um, just to explain that that's how that works. So it's already looking pretty good, but one of the things you notice in is that we're missing the layout. So obviously we want this part on the left and this part to be on the right. Um, and the best way to do that in this day and age is using Flex or Flexbox. Um, in days gone by, you would have floated these elements and you would have had to put in some kind of break. But these days we can just use Flex to do the whole thing. So I'm gonna go back up to my um, top level dev and make it a Flexbox dev. Now, instantly you'll notice that it lays everything out in a row uh, and that's um, Flexbox's default option. You can, um, configure Flexbox to work in column mode, but by default it works as a row. Now, obviously we don't want all of these things to just be a, in one row. Um, we just want these kind of two halves. So what I'm just gonna do is create two more divs, one for the plan title and the plan description. And then I'm gonna create another div for all this stuff that goes on the right hand side. Now. Um, as I've, I'm just going to indent that. As I've hit save there, you'll see instantly that that's that's got us pretty much most of the way there. Um, but Flexbox is doing some kind of weird sizing thing here now. Flexbox sizing can be a bit fiddly um, because it calculates things by itself. But we can try to um, coerce it to do what we want it to do, basically. So, you know, in this case. Um, you could go along the lines of doing something like, um, let's say we want the width of each of these columns to be a half. Um, and, you know, if you did that, that's fine. That would work. And now they're 50%. If I show you this in the dev tools, you know, you'll see each of these is the same width and it, it's 50%. Um, that's a perfectly fine way of doing it. Another way to do it is to almost kind of give one side or one element um, the the preference basically, um, and you can do this by saying f uh, using like flex grow. Uh, if I take take this out, um, and this and flex shrink is the other one, and this this can tell these elements which one should go and which one should shrink, right? So if I did, um, it looks like this left hand side one is growing automatically. Um, so if I just change the right hand side to flex shrink zero, what you'll find is that this left-hand side will grow, but only to the point where the right-hand side comes in. Um, so that's probably what we want to do in this case. We want to prioritize the width of the right-hand side and this, this description here can just expand um, as required. Um, maybe what we'll do is we'll just add a bit of right um, 
margin just so there's a bit of a gap between them and maybe make it two um, and that looks pretty good so okay the last thing that we need to do here is uh, align this um, to the right hand side and uh, add just a, a bit of padding between the, the elements so let's do text right to align this stuff to the right hand side and um, this probably needs a margin to give it some space. Let's double check what the margin is meant to be on this. Um, oh, there is no margin on that one. So it doesn't look like there's a margin on that one, but there is a margin on this one to pop the button down a bit um, now the other thing that we want to do in this case is make this button um, a certain width um, so we can just do that here I, I'm not entirely sure what the width, width is meant to be let's see width let's go for I think it's meant to be about 180 so we're going to go for that um, now we also need to make the text center so we could choose text center but that doesn't work and the reason that doesn't work is because if I bring up my style sheet again this is actually a flex object we've made this inline flex so if we made this inline block it would work but we've made it flex because um, in other places in Lemon Squeezy, we have icons and different things that go in our buttons, and it's easier to style those things um, if the if it, if the button itself is a is a flex object. Um, so in this case, what we can do here is we can make the actual label of the button an element in itself, um, and then what we can do is just do MX Auto, which makes the x-axis margins auto, and that will center it. So. There you have it. Um, that's our simple billing uh, plan component um, in uh, view and tailwind. The last thing that we would do in this case, um, if we're building a proper view component, is add some kind of click handler to the button and we would um, emit some kind of event so that we could use the, uh, the component and, and capture the click and do something with it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's our um, billing component and, and tailwind and view. <clears throat> so let me know if you liked this, if you enjoyed this. Um, let me know if this it would be better if I did it differently or if this um, a different format you would like. Let me know if um, there's certain components you'd like me to build or, or certain things that you would love me to, to talk through. Um, and yeah, hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully you'll get some use out of this. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.